Hi there, welcome to today's session. We're going to talk about AWS here. By the way, I'm Sam. I work as a cloud architect and technical author with Simply Learn. In this section, we're going to talk about what is cloud computing and how things were before AWS. And we're going to talk about what is AWS and the benefits of AWS and the products and services that Amazon offers as of now. And then finally, we're going to end the session with a project that uh, is going to help us understand how to create a Jenkins build server for continuous integration. And in this project, we will learn about uh, how to deploy and host Jenkins and open source automation software predominantly used for CI CD, otherwise continuous integration and continuous development. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of compute resources through a cloud platform accessed via the internet and uh, it is a, it's also a pay-as-you-go service. Be it compute capacity or database or storage in cloud, we access them through the internet and that too on a pay-as-you-go pricing model. Let's talk about how things were before AWS existed. Expedia, as we know as the people logistic company or the company that helps people move around the world with ease, has a certain problem before they decided to migrate to AWS. And migrating to AWS was a solution to their problem. Back then, booking ticket was an unpleasant experience compared to what it is now. It generally would take a long time to book a ticket. And sometimes it would time out if there is a promotion or if a huge sale announced and if the environment is not scaled up to meet the demand. And sometimes it would time out if there is a promotion or if a huge sale announced and uh, they could not scale up the environment and keep up with the speed of the promotion. That's when they got introduced to AWS and with the AWS power to increase the capacity of the environment on the fly solved their scaling issue. Instead of waiting on the new hardware to arrive and wondering what to do with the hardware when the promotion is over, with AWS, we can quickly scale up the environment when there is a need and scale down the environment during lull periods. Now that being said, let's talk about what is AWS. Amazon Web Services, or in short, AWS, is a secure cloud service platform offering compute power, database, content delivery, and other functionality that you would need to help your business scale and grow. AWS is a very secure cloud platform and such security cannot be imagined in on-premises without spending a fortune. Almost any type of applications can be created and deployed in the cloud, which includes the latest IoT applications, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. And the best part is we can avail the service from anywhere as long as we have an active internet. And all this is availed on pay-as-you-go subscription. Now let's talk about the benefits of AWS. AWS Cloud Platform is very easy to use. One needs no complicated programming or compute knowledge to access and use this environment. Even with less programming and compute knowledge, one could become a pro in accessing and maintaining the cloud. The products and services offered are very flexible in nature and that provides room for us to easily integrate the service to other services in AWS and services outside AWS. Cloud in general is a very reliable service and AWS in specific is very reliable. Cloud in general is very reliable and when we talk about uh, AWS, it's very true. A statistic says that about 95% of the cloud computing in the whole world is run on AWS due to AWS reliable nature. The services in AWS are scalable by nature and most of the services provide click button scaling. Services in AWS are very cost effective and it becomes very true when you start using more services in AWS are very cost effective and it becomes very true when you start using more service. Services in AWS are very cost effective and it becomes more true when we start using more since when we start using more service the per unit price drops down even further. Security in the cloud is at its highest with encryption and uh, multi-factor authentications and uh, being able to audit the logs. One can be sure that when one hosts a service in AWS, they are hosting it in an environment which has been built with enterprise security in mind. All right, let's now talk about or talk briefly about the different products and services available in the cloud. 
Some of the products and services available in the cloud are compute, storage, database, migration services, networking and content delivery, developer tools and services available for managing the AWS environment, tools needed for machine learning development, analytic tools needed for security and identity compliance, tools needed for mobile application services, tools needed for IoT and gaming development are some of the products that are available in AWS. All right, let's first talk about compute uh, service. Now, compute service, it enables us to uh, develop, ploy, run, and scale our applications and workloads on the cloud. You might agree with me that compute service is the fundamental of any applications, and AWS provides many options to use those compute services in the cloud, starting from EC2, which is a VM in the cloud, to Lambda, which is serverless computing in the cloud, to compute service, Compute service also includes container services and services that help batch processing and deploying applications and load balancing the request when we run our applications on multiple servers and services that help batch processing and developing applications and load balancing the request when we run our applications in multiple servers. We're going to talk about two compute products in specific. Let's talk about EC2. EC2 is a service with a resizable compute capacity in the cloud that allows business subscribers to run application programs in the computing environment. And the best part here is EC2 is resizable. Anytime there is more demand, I can simply resize my computer uh, to meet the demand. On the other hand, Lambda is a serverless compute service used to execute backend codes. It really helps us to focus on the core competencies like application building the code. Let's talk about storage service for a while. AWS storage is known for its durability and availability, uh, with S3 being the object storage for the internet where users or application can uh, directly upload and download the content from the internet, and EBS being a durable block storage that gets attached to the EC2 instance, and Glacier being the archival solution in the cloud, and storage gateway being the gateway for storing data locally and having a backup in the cloud in case of disaster. Let's talk about two important uh, storage service products in the cloud, which is S3. Now, S3 is a web-based cloud storage service. It's designed for online backup and archiving of data. And the best part about S3 is that it provides 11.9 durability, which means once we store the data in S3, the chances of losing the data is nearly zero. EBS, on the other hand, provides persistent and resizable and migratable storage to the VMs or EC2s that we can run in the cloud. Now let's talk about the database offerings in the cloud. Beginning with RDS for SQL and DynamoDB for NoSQL and Elastic Cache for web caching services and Amazon Redshift for petabyte scale data warehousing services, AWS database service provides all the database service needs we might have. Let's talk about two database uh, services in specific, RDS. RDS is a web service that is designed to simplify the setup, operation, and scaling of the relational database in the cloud. And DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service, which is well known for its low latency and scalability performance. Network and content delivery service contributes to the uh, infrastructure as a service side of the cloud. It provides a secure cloud infrastructure and connects our physical network to our private virtual network with low latency and high transfer speeds. And under networking and content delivery services, VPC is virtual private cloud networking in the cloud. Route 53 is the DNS service in the cloud. And Direct Connect is a service that connects our on-premises with AWS environment through point-to-point -point cables. And CloudFront is content delivery network or caching service throughout the world. Let's talk about uh, VPC for a while. VPC, it enables us to launch AWS resources into a virtual network that we define in the cloud. VPC resembles very similar to our office network with uh, uh, subnets, uh, firewalls, uh, private zones, uh, public or DMZ zones, and a lot more. We can also create a VPN connection between on-premises and cloud environment through this VPC. And Route 53, it is a scalable and highly available domain name system web service that helps to route the end users to the internet application. Now, AWS is a domain registrar as well. And uh, here we can buy domain names for our organization and use them to mask the IP addresses behind it. 
And by the way, if you didn't know already, DNS is the one that translates human readable names like uh, www.xyz.com into the numeric IP address. Let's talk about developer tool services. Now, developer tool services in Amazon uh, provides services where developers can store an application source code and automatically build, test, and deploy applications on AWS, out of which AWS CodeStar enables us to quickly develop, build, and deploy applications in AWS. And Code Build is a fully managed build service that compiles source code, runs tests, and produces software packages that are ready to deploy. And code deploy, on the other hand, is a service that automatic that automates is a service that automates software developments to a variety of compute services, including Amazon EC2, Amazon Lambda, and even instances running on premises. And AWS Code Pipeline is a continuous integration and continuous delivery service for fast and reliable application and infrastructure updates. Let's talk about uh, CodeStar. CodeStar is a service designed for developers where they can quickly deploy, build, and develop applications on AWS. AWS CodeStar provides a unified user interface enabling us to easily manage our software development activities in one place. With AWS CodeStar, we can set up our entire continuous delivery tool chain in minutes, allowing us to start releasing codes faster. And not only that, AWS CodeStar makes it easy for you or your a whole team to work together securely, allowing you to easily manage access and add owners, contributors, and viewers to our project. And not only that, AWS CodeStar project comes with a project management dashboard, including an integrated issue tracking capabilities provided by a Jira software. With the uh, AWS CodeStar project dashboard, we can easily track progress across our entire software development process from our backlog of work items to team's recent code deployments so on and so forth. AWS Code Build, on the other hand, is a cloud service that enables an IT developer to build and test code with continuous scaling. Now here, you pay only for the build time that you have used. Now Code Build is a fully managed service that helps compiling uh, source codes and run tests and produce software packages that are ready to deploy. AWS Co with AWS Code Build, uh, we, there is no need for us to provision, manage, and scale our own build servers. Code build scales continuously and process and processes multiple builds concurrently. So our builds are not left waiting in the queue because it's processed concurrently. Let's talk about uh, security, identity, and compliance services available in Amazon. In general, the security, identity, and compliance services in Amazon helps us to maintain a secure environment in Amazon by providing services for user authentication, for limiting the access access to certain set of users on the AWS environment. Out of which IAM or Identity and Access Management, it's a product that enables us to manage access to AWS services and resources that enables us to manage access to AWS resources and services in a secure fashion. Using IAM, we can create and manage AWS users and groups and use permissions to allow and deny their access to AWS resources. On the other hand, KMS or Key Management Service is a managed service that makes it easy for us to create and control the encryption keys used to encrypt our data. And Cognito, it lets us to add user sign up, sign in, and access control to our web and mobile apps quickly and easily. And WAF or Web Application Firewall helps us to protect our web applications from common web exploits that could affect application availability that could compromise security or consume excessive resources. And WAF, it gives us good control over which traffic to allow or block to our applications by sort of defining customizable web security rules. We can use WAF to create custom rules that block common attack patterns such as SQL injections or 
uh, cross-site uh, scripting and we can also create rules that are designed for our specific application. Out of all the four, identity and access management, it helps us to control access to AWS services and resources for our users. With the identity and access management, I can restrict user access or I can give a user complete access to the environment. If it's an admin, I can assign complete access and if it is a user, I can provide uh, some privileged access or less or degraded or no access depending on the role that the user plays in the organization. And KMS is a service that helps helps us to create and control the encryption keys used to encrypt the data. And also, uh, we can use hardware security model, HSM, to protect the security of our data in the cloud. Also, we can use hardware security model to protect the security of the key itself. And let's talk about the management the tools and services available in Amazon. Management tools and services, it helps us to manage monitor and automate all the resources running in the AWS infrastructure, beginning with the CloudWatch, a service which monitors the environment by receiving logs and creating a dashboard and sending alerts as needed, and CloudFormation, a service that uh, a service through which we can deploy new environments using just templates, and auto-scaling a product that lets us to handle the dynamic traffic with ease by dynamically scaling up and scaling down the environment as needed, and CloudTrail is another product or another monitoring tool that helps us to monitor or collect the logs of all the API calls to our environment and provides a searchable tool based on keywords and timestamps. Let's talk about CloudWatch a bit more detail. Now CloudWatch is a monitoring service for AWS. With CloudWatch we can collect, we can track the metrics, we can collect and monitor log files, we can also enable CloudWatch to set alarms and automatically react to changes in the AWS environment. CloudWatch can also monitor AWS resources such as EC2 instances, DynamoDB tables, Amazon RDS instances, as well as custom metrics generated by your application and services and any log files your applications would generate. Now we can use CloudWatch to get a system-wide visibility into resource utilization, application performance and operational health. We can use these insights to react and keep your applications running smoothly. And CloudFormation, on the other hand, uh, provides a common language for us to describe and provision all the infrastructure resources in our cloud environment. Now, CloudFormation allows us to set up and model all our AWS resources so that we can spend less time in managing those resources and more time on our application. Now, CloudFormation is really an infrastructure as a code service where I can build an infrastructure based on the portable template I might be carrying. All right, in this demo session, we'll talk about how to install Jenkins on Amazon Linux EC2 instance. And before that, let's talk about what is Jenkins and what is the purpose of it, why it is used and all that stuff. Now, what is Jenkins? Now, Jenkins is an open source automation server and it provides a lot of inbuilt plugins for deploying and automating any project. In short, you know, it's an continuous integration server and it is used for many purposes, used for tasks that take care of continuous deployment and uh, delivery. And it provides these advantages like the developer now will not have to focus on fixing errors because errors are automatically handled by Jenkins. And because of that, it leads to faster development environment. All right, so how do we go about doing it? Let's get started. The first thing is to go to our console and uh, launch an EC2 instance. Actually, let me walk you through the steps through the PPT and then I'll show it in the console. So let me first walk you through the steps in the installing a Jenkins server. In this lab, we're going to launch an uh, VM or a virtual application server to host our Jenkins installation. And then we are going to deploy Jenkins on top of it and then configure it as an build server. And for this, we will need an AWS account to begin with and then a bit of experience in Jenkins and then some familiarity on EC2 and how EC2 gets connected to VPC stuff like that so when we're all done this is how the architect is going to look like you know users they get connected to EC2 instance which is a Jenkins server and then there are slaves build slaves that can be monitored that can be used in deployment by the Jenkins server so let's see how it is done all right so let's first launch a server let it be an uh, Amazon Linux instance I'm going to pick T2 Micro. 
because of the free eligibility and because this is a lab that should be more than enough and I'm going to keep this as default you know I'm going to stick with the default VPC and I'm going to keep all the settings as defaults and then I'm not going to add a storage I'm going to keep the storage limited with the root volume and then for security group because we're going to access it through the internet I would like port 80 in fact since this is a lab environment and since I'll be tearing it down or right after the lab is over we're gonna use all IP or we're gonna use anywhere all traffic anywhere view and launch and I already have a key pair that I have created if you're not familiar with creating key pair launching EC2 instance you might need to spend some time watching the AWS EC2 video that would help so I already have a key pair that's attached to this account in this region so I'm using that key pair to launch the instance all right then that's my Jenkins server all right so once that is installed let's log into it since this being an uh, Linux instance I'm going to use putty to log in and then use the key pair that we have downloaded to log in and the key pair was right here all right now I'm connected to it as first thing we will have to install the Java environment I'm going to show some commands towards the end so if you're planning to do labs yourself you can use those commands they will be very handy in fact I can show it right now as we speak so these commands are to install Java environment and it has two versions as we speak and I've chosen the latest version so I've typed two and I've chosen the latest version in installing Java environment the second is to install Apache Maven let me show you some commands that's used to install Apache Maven and these commands vary from you know Linux version to Linux version so if you're using a different uh, Linux version just be sure that you're using commands which are respective to that particular version All right let's install Apache Maven looks like some of them are already installed and it's throwing error for some but anyway it's an ins it's considered an successful installation and then let's install Jenkins and the commands to install Jenkins is right here so these are to install Jenkins and I mean to download the software and install it and then start the Jenkins and make sure the Jenkins stays running even after a reboot so let's run these commands All right, now Jenkins should be ready or the Jenkins server is installed in our EC2 instance and it is ready for us to access. And the default port is port 8080. So let me go to the URL or IP. Let me go to that and then try accessing it using port 8080. There you go. So at the moment it's locked. It requires admin password to log in and the admin password is present in right, this particular folder and this particular file in the Linux instance so let me get that okay one moment looks like the admin password is not present just give me one quick moment okay it's just a permission issue let me check the password in that folder again with the elevated permissions there you go there's my password all right, once we're logged in, we can install all the suggested plugins. Now that's going to take some time to run and install all the selected, all the default plugins needed to run a Jenkins server. All right, it's done. Now, as next thing, it's going to ask for the admin username and password. You can choose as an existing administrator or you can also create an, another admin user. In this case, I'm going to create another admin user.
All right, so the Jenkins server is installed. We can use the similar but slightly different procedure on the Jenkins nodes or the slave servers to make them Jenkins slave and uh, you know, respond to the builds that we push or you know, receive the builds or receive the jobs that we push through this Jenkins server. So we have built this um, a Jenkins server on Amazon EC2. A similar and slightly different procedures can be followed to build Jenkins build servers that can contact Jenkins server to receive jobs and you know, start working. Thank you for watching. I believe you enjoyed uh, the session. I'll meet you in another session. Thank you. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.